So, I'm Curtis Devine. I'm a second year master's student in computer science. Um, I'm Jack Clark. I'm an undergrad working on uh, computer engineering. And our project is going to be a hardware implementation of the binary connect strategy for neural networks. Um, throughout this presentation, we're going to be talking about the background of uh, binary connect and neural networks in general and why we need it. Um, give a brief description of what our project is going to be and then go into some of the design content we're going to need to implement in our project as well as the testing and deliverables we'll need for the modules we develop. And then finish with the schedule timeline of what we're going to be doing when and the reference paper that we use in this project. So as a bit of background, uh, with our original implementation of neural networks and convolutional ones at that, uh, you would usually need a GPU in order to speedily compute the classification of an input. Um, but we know the GPUs are also very power hungry and they're not uh, scalable to our like mobile devices, for example. And we want to look for ways to speed up these neural nets and scale them down such that our smaller devices can implement the networks as well with an accuracy similar to that on an actual GPU-based computer. Uh, one of these speed-up strategies exists in binarizing the weights of the fully connected part of a neural network. So, so when the input's been scaled down through pooling and filtering to the size that it can be pushed through the linear algebra steps of the deep learning strategy, we want to binarize the weights of the matrices that affect the input. Um, there's two methods to binarizing the weights suggested in the paper that we use as a reference. Uh, we could use the sign of the original weight, so if it's positive or zero, we could assign the weight a positive one, or if the original weight was negative, we would assign it a binarized weight of negative one. Uh, so we could do that, which would lose some information, because probabilistically this isn't always going to be the case. Um, I mean, with some probability, things are going to be messed up. So we could lose a lot of information just by doing a hard-coded uh, binarization such as this. The paper suggests another alternative where we could use a sigmoid function and apply the binarization probabilistically based on the output of the sigmoid. And this will lose less information because it's more probabilistic and random in nature, but it's also computationally intensive in a hardware perspective because there's uh, floating point, multiplication, division, addition, uh, maximizations, comparisons, etc. Um, but once we have the binary weights, we can use them and we can use them in the forward and backward propagation steps of the network. Um, we use we will use plus and minus one based on what the paper recommends because this allows us to in the software implementation use a simple accumulate function where we would just have a bunch of additions and subtractions as opposed to multiply accumulate functions, which would be the case in the GPU based. Uh, neural net. And floating point multiplication is just very costly in terms of hardware, so we want to eliminate that and go with a simple accumulate function. Um, and then naturally once we have all of these partial derivatives from the back propagation step of the neural net, we can use that to, count, to modify the original weights of the network. And then for every testing step we get out of that, we can just keep the cycle going. Um, so, for the actual project description of what we are going to be doing, I know you have kind of the background. So we're going to attempt to speed up the binary connect algorithm by developing a complementary hardware structure um, on an FPGA. The simplifications made by the binary connect algorithm lend itself pretty well to an FPGA in implementation just because it completely removes the uh, uh, multiply accumulate, which is most of the hardware overhead in this case, uh, so we can yeah, just like Curtis said, simple addition and subtraction, really uh, good in parallel for FPGAs. Um, and uh, we're going to, there's the two different kinds of binarization Curtis talked about. We're going to uh, attempt to implement both of them um, just to see if we can notice any significant difference in either speed up or uh, accuracy. Because if, you know, if it turns out that the sign-based binarization only loses a little bit of uh, accuracy, but it speeds up considerably, then that seems like it would be uh, 
a better option. Um, so for our design content, uh, we're going to create the following modules in Verilog. Uh, we're going to use uh, a fixed point adder slash subtractor, and we're going to use fixed point because it significantly cuts down on the amount of data. Um, floating point calculations, especially on FPGAs, are pretty difficult um, and computationally intensive, so we're just going to simplify it quite a bit. Um, we're also going to a comparison module, um, a random number generator to generate initial weights for the neural net, um, a fixed point multiplier, and that's just for the sigmoid binarization. The uh, sign-based one doesn't actually need a fixed point multiplier, but if we're going to implement both, we need to do that. And then, of course, a high-level control module. It's actually going to um, connect all of these individual components and route input output uh, through them. So for our testing and deliverables, uh, we're going to all the Verilog modules previously listed. Um, we're also going to create test benches for all the modules so we can simulate them and ensure that they actually work correctly. Um, We've got timings for the unaccelerated binary connect, just to have some kind of baseline to see to compare it against. Um, timings for the Verilog modules, so just like the straight up input output speed uh, for them. And then estimated speed up, if you were to implement the entirety of the binary connect algorithm, like the entire neural net onto an FPGA module, um, what the actual expected speed up would be compared to just running it on a general purpose CPU machine. Um, and our schedule is uh, first going to get kind of a high level overview, the test bench and Verilog modules outlined. We need to figure out where the I.O. is going to go for each module. Um, so we're going to actually write the Verilog modules, complete all the test benches, and then finally get, uh, gather all the data for our tests. Are there any questions? So this one is the best so far, because at least one of you has already, you know, you know, think of, thought about everything. You, you list very detailed, you know, deliverable um, bullets in this slide. And this is very good. So at, at least you improve the difficulty by ten times compared to the previous group. Um, well, so I think we're just going to focus on the modules. We, our original plan was to implement the entire thing onto the FPGA, but uh, after doing some research, we realized that that might not be feasible in the time frame, just because it's kind of a huge task to put a full neural net onto an FPGA. So we figured we would just do kind of a hardware accelerator that, uh, yeah, not the entire thing would not be running on this FPGA, just the actual, um, the weight steps. Particularly, you have undergraduate students in this group. This is very good. And uh, even at the, at the end of this semester, you cannot deliver all the, you know, bullets you list. You can only, you know, you can, you may, you know, do several of them and then connect them together and uh, do some test. I think that's good enough for me, at least. Thank you. Thank you. Any other group? If no other group, we can stop today. And uh, in the next lecture, we will continue to do the presentation. If you don't do the presentation, um, you have no opportunity to, to do that anymore. <laughs>